Good morning uh, and welcome. Today I thought I'd revisit this uh, Bush DAC-90A radio from about 1951 to 59, I think Bush made them. Uh, I think this is an earlier one, uh, so closer to the uh, 51. They also made another one called a Bush DAC-90, no A on the end, and that had octal valves in it. This one's got rim locks in it. So I think they made the earlier one from about 46 and that was the same case. The only difference was that they used, a, I think they used a fabric speaker uh, cover instead of this uh, expanded metal one that's in the, the later models. So when I got this one, this had been in uh, storage somewhere quite damp and wet. Um, it was completely rusted out inside. The chassis was covered in rust, all the framework, which we'll have a look at later, all covered in rust and I had to sandblast everything off. Uh, quite heavily to get it back to some sort of metal and I had to respray everything I couldn't uh, you know the plating was destroyed so uh, the other thing it had was uh, the or well, the dial glass was uh, nothing left of it you, you could just make it out and if you touched any of the paint on the back it just flaked off just fell off it powdered off so I was able to uh, reproduce this glass and we'll talk about that shortly so this is a, a, an AC-DC set, it's a live chassis, runs on about 200 to 250 odd volts I believe. As you can see in the back as I have reclaimed it because it was really, uh, it was just heavy rust all over it. I had to steal two of the valves to service another radio uh, and uh, I've bought replacement ones. So what I thought today is I was going to just put the placements back in but when I did the original dial I couldn't actually read what the little um, towns were or cities and um, I got some of them wrong so I misspelled or you know just got the, the words plain wrong so uh, I made another one up I did the artwork and my uh, son-in-law printed them off on a vinyl and then I had to um, get inside and cut off with a sharp blade I had to cut off the white bit there and that left the clear numbers on the front so that's the new one it's got the correct names for the towns and the cities so I'm going to um, swap that out with the, the one with the incorrect spellings on it but they come up really well. So. When I first got this radio I was trying to take the knobs off and I'm pulling at them, tugging at them uh, there's no screw inside around the, uh, the, the, the knob here I couldn't work it out and uh, found it on the internet some guy said oh, they've got screw holes they've got holes in the bottom of the case that you undo the screws from and there it is there through the hole in the uh, bottom of the case I didn't even didn't even consider it had the case just sitting on the bench of course and the holes are covered uh, apparently they used to have a little plug fitted over that to uh, make it completely uh, uh, so you couldn't put your fingers in there because it's a pretty big hole so they worried children I suppose could put their fingers in there and touch something because that screw is connected to the chassis of course Now in order to get the wave switch um, off the side, the knob, uh, there's a screw right inside you get in from the back. I put a little Molex clip on mine to get the speaker apart. Well there it is. Uh, as you can see I've painted everything. Um, just to, just because of the heavy rust. It used to have um, the two, I think they're two volt lamps in here. Hard to get those anymore. Uh, and they used to blow out uh, quite easily when you, if you turned it off and uh, turned it back on too quickly, the little globes would burn out. Uh, I ended up replacing them with LEDs. I've got one in each side here. This, this normally doesn't have these little aluminium covers on the end. So they've got LEDs in there now. Uh, and they work quite well. Looks pretty good actually. Lights up nicely, uh, but it's not original, of course. Now mine, unfortunately, had it's supposed to have a big round aerial on a disc here. Uh, that was missing on mine. Uh, I couldn't get one, and uh, so I ended up just putting. A, I made a loop stick up, and I've put that in, and that works very well. Certainly works better than the old uh, antenna that was fitted there. Well, it would have been fitted there. It's not on mine though. Uh, so this uh, this works quite well. Not original, but. The whole thing's not original now, I had to coat it in so much paint. So I'm going to refit those two valves and that's all I need to do to this. This part works fine. So the two valves I need to change are the uh, a UF41 and a um, UL41. 
Uh, now, I got the UF41 from locally in Australia, that was no problem. But this uh, UL41, I had to ended up getting it from Canada, and because uh, buying stuff from Canada and Australia with the exchange rate and the postage costs cost a lot of money to, to buy the valve, but I just couldn't find it anywhere else. So, yeah, so there it is UL41, new old stock rim lock. Oh, that came out pretty easy. Um, these um, there's some bits of foam rubber on the bottom and top. I'll just transfer that over to the new uh, glass, and uh, we'll be ready to put it back. Okay, I've done that. The new rubber's on there, so we'll just put it back in, and that's done. Now the other thing with, with this radio, when I got it, this. Um, Celestian speaker was once again just covered in rust. Bugs had eaten around the uh, the side of the uh, the uh, suspension cushion, so I repaired that ages ago and uh, repainted it. I've re <laughs> sandblasted and repainted it. One of the issues with this speaker is this speaker in these radios is that the um, spider where it attaches around the voice coil comes unglued and. Uh, I could virtually lifted the entire thing out. Um, I was able to take the cone out and uh, do some repairs, re-glue it all, and uh, it's working fine. I made a new sticker up. I repainted. Well, the sticker wasn't there, there anyway, but I repainted the magnet, and I've just made a, a paper one up there. Uh, but it looked pretty ordinary. The printer was playing up at the time. But uh, my son-in-law has. Uh, I sent him the artwork once again, and he printed one on this uh, vinyl. It's a vinyl sticker. Uh, so it's pre-cut, i just got to peel it off and put it on top, but I'm just going to remove that old um, paper effort of mine. Oh, that was easy. Now the uh, speaker Celestion was upside down all the time, so I can uh, make sure I put my new one on upside down too. So I'll just peel it off there. And center it. If you get these vinyl stickers, you can put some uh, soapy water down first, and that'll let you position the speaker, this sticker properly, and uh, you can slide it around. Just let it dry. So there you go. That looks good, just slightly off center, just the way they would have done it. So that's great. As I mentioned before, I uh, changed out the uh, little light globes that uh, normally fit in this radio because I didn't have any. And I've put in LEDs. Well, I used a capacitor, an X2 uh, capacitor, some resistors as a voltage dropper to get it down to the, I think, th 3 volts or so. Um, there's information on the internet on how to work that out, what you need. Uh, and that works really well. So I'm going to put it back in the uh, case now and we'll give it a test. I won't test it out here because I don't need to. I've got to connect it to the speaker in the case. So. All right, so it's all back in its case. I actually fitted the knobs back on because I couldn't <laughs> the knobs sit inside the case. I couldn't tune it. Um, so the other thing I didn't provide when I did the loop stick, I made the loop stick. When I did it, I didn't provide any external aerial um, facility. So I've just wrapped a bit of uh, test lead around there. We'll see if that'll induce a signal. I uh, can't get much in, in this room. So uh, let's give it a go. Alright, so I'm going to run this through a isolation transformer, and this is a hot chassis, so if you haven't got an isolation transformer, don't even play with these things. They are dangerous. I've also got a new uh, watt meter set up here, which I'll just turn on. So this now gives you uh, the AC voltage, uh, the watts, the amps, and the uh, hertz of the signal, and it flips between that and power factor, I think. So uh, not, not terribly worried about that one. All right, so I've got it on there. Um, I'll just turn it on the front of the radio. And we're on restricted power. So we can see it's pulling 14 watts. Let's drop the AC down to 150. So it's getting about 154. It's coming up as the tubes warm up, the valves. 
I think we can go to full power. So it's now getting 233 volts and it's pulling about 25 watts. I would have thought it'd be more than that. New Zealand only hit the front once this match in the first quarter. If it doesn't really reflect where it was at because of his momentum. Let's turn some lights off so we can see the dial. Have a look at going into these next two games. Um, but yeah, it was it was tight the whole way. Um, every time we won a ball, I felt like they won a ball. Um, so it was a good a good battle. We want to be able to play moments like that and fight out games at a time. Probably not coming out as well as it really looks. The uh, the dial's just got a nice uh, yellow glow to it. It's not too bright. And it's very even all the way across too, so it looks looks really good lit up. Um, and it's got all the correct spellings now. Some of the uh, some of the misspellings are quite rude actually. But anyway, so uh, that's going to work just fine. Hmm. Yeah, I like this radio. It's good. So if you get the chance to do one of these, jump at it. Um, there's a fair bit of info on the internet about it. This was one of the most popular British radios ever made. So. Um, well, valve radios anyway. Alright. Yeah. Well, I'll put them back on and uh, put them back on the shelf. But uh, yeah, I like this yeah, one. So then you've got quite a good understanding of where each other moves. Um